is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Right. How you feeling, baby? Doing good. Oh, how are you? Excellent. Can't uh, can't complain, man. So uh, the portal for Larinaga is uh, getting a little crazy, huh? Yeah, yeah. five five guys, uh, I guess, uh, on their way out. But you know, when you when you lose your last ten games and uh, you play as bad <laughs> as you do, you kind of don't care, right? As long as it's uh, not your best, best, best players. And I, I don't think any of these guys were are, are guys that are you know considered serious losses yeah yeah and well uh the football team's also uh experiencing transfer portal stuff this is a new world we live in oh uh it's, it's gonna happen and uh, i knew the moment miami went out and got sixth and seventh scholarship running backs that this was likely uh the scenario when they signed those two freshmen in the spring you're gonna lose guys uh i think you know you have sort of the 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 perfect example here uh of of henry Parrish, who led the team in rushing the last two years wasn't necessarily a dominant back but uh a guy who saw solid. the other guys coming he saw solid. the other guys coming yeah he was solid and he also saw the other guys coming he sees mark fletcher he knows that uh miami's going to be looking in the portal for for another guy now in the spring transfer window period so it's the business of free agency in college sports now man it's just the way it is yeah and he knows fletcher's better yeah yeah, and, and he's he's more of and Fletcher's more of what Mario wants. You know, when you, when you're gonna go three and four wide with this offense, um, you know, and you're single back back there, uh, and and you know you you might run the ball with Cam Ward less than you did last year because he he can make so many things happen t for you with his arm. Uh, there's gonna be fewer opportunities. So this guy uh, wants to take off and uh, you know go uh, go find somewhere else to play, which is his right. Yeah, no, I, I I totally understand what what he's trying to do. And how is Fletcher doing, by the way? Yeah, I mean, he had the foot injury in the pinstripe bowl, and you know, at first when I when I asked some people close to him about the situation, they said he's going to be fine. Don't worry, he'll be back in the summertime. Uh, you know, I've heard mixed reviews since then that uh, that the injury might cause him to start a little later, right, and come back in fall camp versus the summer camp. So, I think it's just one of those things where you know. Um, it's a foot injury. You don't want to push it too hard. You want him to come back and be healthy August 31st for the Open at Florida. That's I, I've heard mixed answers about it. I've some people have told me yes, it's Liz Frank. Other people have said it's not. So I, I haven't spoken to Mark directly myself, so I haven't been able to to, to ask him. Hearing this from people around him, so uh, I, I think my experience, you know, my experience, when they want to hide Liz Frank, they don't tell you. And then when it's a midfoot sprain or it's the yeah. metacarpsal or whatever the it is, they tell you exactly what the 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 the, the bone injury is. But right. somehow when it's Liz Frank, you know, like AVG, nobody really knew it was Liz Frank until after that right. and, and Ginkgo suffered. So he's 29, he's a free agent. And it's a Liz Frank injury. So I kind of understand the Dolphins saying, eh, you know, because Liz Frank is a very dangerous thing. You may not yeah. come back from that the same way. Your foot doesn't react the same way. If I'm correct, was Liz Frank eventually the injury that, that kind of stalled UD's career? That foot injury? Was it a Liz Frank? I don't it, even know. It might have it been what he was dealing with, yes. I think – he was never the same player again after that foot injury. No, he most was. most people never are the same player again. And that's the thing. You know, Mark Fletcher, he's a young kid, right? You, you know, he's got a lot of potential. Right. You know, if it if it's close to being that or if it's similar to that, right, they're not going to mess with it. They're not going to rush him back. So if, if they delay him and he doesn't come back and start practicing until two weeks before, uh, whatever. You know, I think as long as you have him in uniform, look, you also got Trevante Citizen back. And that guy, I was told, might not have a college career. He's got a big knee brace on. He's out there running every single day in practice. He is the prototypical running back that Mario wants. 6'1", 225, just like Fletcher. That's what he wants. Um, you know, the kid who just left, uh, Parrish, 5'10", 5, 5'11", 5, 190. That, that's not going to cut it in this offense. So. He's an effort guy. He's an effort guy. Yeah, I, I like Henry Parrish. I've I, I could never say anything bad about the guy because he plays hard, bro. Oh, he does. But you got another version of him. You've got two yeah. other versions of him on this roster with with Chris Johnson and 
uh, AJ Allen, you know, who who came on and hurdled, you know, at the, remember that hurdle touchdown where he leaped over sure. a guy late in the year. So you've yeah, got yeah. guys that can do what he does. So, you know, for the okay. Miami fans that are distraught, reputation wise, I look at Parrish as, hey man, you're a good dude. You're 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 a real. You're, you're a pro in a in a in a pros in a pros game nowadays. You know, you handled mm-hmm. yourself like a pro. So I have a lot of respect for Henry Parrish, but I totally understand what you're saying and. Brother, all you have to do is look at Mark Fletcher, and you know that's another level player. I mean, give me a yeah. break. And, and that's what Mario's trying to do at every position here. He's just trying to take it up from, you know, 7 and 6 to 11 and 1, 12 and 0. That's what he wants. And that's what he was here to do, right? He was brought here to do that, to raise the level everywhere on the field. And so guys are guys going to hit the road after a little while. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what, what else is uh, in the cards on the recruiting side? Well, I mean, look, they have a bunch of kids that will be coming in over the next month. We know that it's going to be busy uh, on the recruiting side. You'll have a bunch of different visitors. One thing that happened in practice today uh, that people noticed, Robbie Washington, a kid who came in as a wide receiver, has moved over and to defense. He's playing some cornerback. I know cornerback was a position that we were all kind of worried about coming in. Robbie, uh, you know, his dad, Bobby Washington, was a great running back at Miami Killian, signed with Miami, ended up at NC State and a couple of other schools. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a blue chip receiver prospect, just getting some opportunities on that side. I like it when guys do little position switches. Oh, I think those are, that's always sort of noteworthy, right? When you, when you get to it see is, them. Especially- it is. Mm-hmm. And then it's still scary because he's a receiver. <laughs> and will he develop the instincts to be a corner? You know, yeah. uh, right away, will will it translate to him? Because some guys can use either or to their benefit in the transition, and then right. some guys just can't make the transition. You know what I mean? So it just right. It's but receiver. It's, it's kind of receiver though is one of those positions that's very deep for Miami. I think this is more about the kid wanting to get on the field and knowing there's more opportunity maybe at cornerback, and having watched him uh, well, as a player. Uh, he is a tough, 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 tough as nails kid. So he's got the mentality, I think. I like huh? that. That means he's self-motivated right? to make the position switch instead of a coach telling you, you know, you're not really going to be playing a lot in this. But, you know, you got the skill to play X position. You ever tried that? And then that's when he reluctantly has to move and right. learn or whatever. But if it's what you're saying. Yeah. That's dog. Yeah, and, and he is he is very much that. Watching him as a competitor on the seven-on-seven seven circuit, seeing him in high school, he is a dog, and I think he just wants opportunity to get on the field faster, and I can't blame him. Uh, when you, He's a talented kid. He's, he can do it. He can play both sides, and I think it's uh, it's an interesting look uh, for, for camp going forward. Um, but to answer your other question on recruiting, yeah, I mean, Mario's not letting up, dude, on that side of the ball. Like, they, they are, you know – they they are still going after big time kids in 2025 and 2026, and I expect them to have another top ten recruiting class. He drinks like a a whole gallon of Cuban coffee. How the hell does he even sleep? <laughs> I mean, he doesn't. He really doesn't. He he makes Scarface look straight, and he takes no drugs. It's all <laughs> Cuban coffee. He does really this cocaine. Scarface was doing regular cocaine, and yet there he is, way more energy than Scarface. <laughs> Amazing. In fact, it should be a picture of of Cristobal sitting back with a cigar, and instead of a a, a mountain of coke, it's like a mountain of Cuban coffee beans. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that's that's it. It's what he needs. It's all he needs to get going every single day. That and uh, the recruiting oh, rankings. Coffee beans, and he's dominating the world like that. That's it. You know, the world is his. Yep. So, is, by the way, is that the new logo on top of the practice facility? The world is mine. The world is mine. Yes, that's what uh, they put up there. Yes, uh, after uh, after spring break. It would uh, Yeah, that's uh, that's our guy Mario. That's for sure. All right, what do you got going on in the athletics so folks can check you out? Well, working on a couple of projects. We're going to start this new series, all state teams for uh, modern day recruiting. So we're going to pick like the the best offensive and defensive players to come out of the state of Florida, high school wise. Uh, you're going to see a lot of Alabama representation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, college representation on those teams, but uh, yeah, we're 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 doing fun little off season project. We're obviously gonna have spring football stuff, more podcasts, all that kind of stuff, recruiting coverage. Uh, but that's that's sort of been my project. I've been doing it. Uh, I, I just started the Florida team, but I've done all the research for Georgia, California, Texas. So I'm gonna have all that rolling out here over the next few weeks. 
Awesome. Follow him on Twitter at Manny underscore Navarro and catch his work and subscribe to The Athletic. Manny, as always, thank you, my brother. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Take care. Thank you, sir. That is the great Manny Navarro. As always, Caneswear, use our code Big O10 right there online at Caneswear.com. Remember, when you order over $99, you will get free shipping. Use our code Big O10. You will get 10% off your purchase. If you go personally, you can use our code Big O10. You will get 10% off your purchase at Caneswear. 